What's up, everybody? It's your boy Uchi, and of course, how, I'm how, joined how, by Housetop. He's not with here. me, but he's on Skype. Y'all can hear him. It's yeah. It's not the voices in my head. It's no Randy Orton. All right. <laughs> and we are back again. Once again, no surprises this time. Just straight up because yeah. we have some important business to take care of. Loxton is also back again. Once again. With part 2.5 of the Pokemon and Theory. And we're about to do a live reaction right here, right now. Alright, I am so ready. Alright, house, I'm going to time this 3, 2, 1, and then we're going to hit this play button, alright? Okay. Alright, 3, 2, 1, and here we go. Yo, why is it always so epic? Yeah, it's freaking me out already. <laughs> it's just Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Eclipse. Pokemon and NASA. Let's go. And NASA. Oh, right? <laughs> Romans, Arceus is all Poke Jesus Bible <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yes. My part three notes are almost complete. And then I can bug Toby <laughs> some more. <laughs> oh, but it's getting late. Off to bed, I suppose. Oh hey, that's my dreamscape. Where I sleep, think. How convenient. Oh nice. There's even a camera over there this time. Neat. Oh hey, and it's Arizo. What are you doing here, Arizo? Um. Arizo. I have no idea. This is your dream, though. I guess I'm here to help you think about some new stuff. New stuff? Like what? Well, Team Skull seems pretty interesting. Maybe they'll fit into your reset theory. Oh. Yeah, I love that theme it's like song. You're reading my mind. Right. Well, that's because I'm in your mind. <laughs> right, right. So, does Team Skull hold any significance in alchemy? Oh, oh yes, C Caput Mortum. Uh, <laughs> what? You're gonna have to use Caput Mortum? <laughs> the alchemical skull. It, it literally fits into everything Mortum. really snugly. Good. Now, talk my ear off about it. Oh, God. Ooh, ooh. Already. Yo, nice. Ooh, the beginning. Yeah, this, is like this is pretty good. Yeah, dude. Yo, he always has a, a nice, unique intro. I always love that. Lot yeah. Of always. So, Team Skull. They are the new bad guys for Sun and Moon. And with a name like Skull and in a place like the Alola region, what do you think is the popular assumption about their role in the game? I'm sure many people assume they'll be just simple pirates. They are into capturing rare Pokemon and selling them for money, <laughs> or even just straight up stealing money. Perhaps they could also be poachers. Alola mm. is full of Pokemon found only mm -hmm. there, what with all the Alola forms and all. And a lot of money can be made by harvesting them and selling their goods on the black market. But that would be too simple. I mean, that's similar to what Team Rocket yeah. does, but ever since Team Rocket was no longer the main evil organization, every other evil team has been after something catastrophic. Team Magma and Aqua wanted to dry out or flood the Earth, or even revert it to its original form, right. devoid of life, to uh -huh. start anew. Team Galactic wanted to reset the entire universe in their vision, and nearly achieved it. And of Team Plasma wanted to reset the world in a way that separates humans from Pokemon to separate worlds. And gets us of Team Plasma wants to cast the world into a second Ice Age and take everyone's Pokemon. So that he has ultimate power over all and can install his new world order. And Team Flare wants to purify the Earth to make it beautiful again by activating an alchemic. Yo, if they want to make it beautiful again, you probably should shave his beard. Which is gross. And now Team Skull are just pirates? Yeah, I don't buy it. Rightly so, and now, if you've seen part one and two of this series- Oh, I've seen it. Oh, we, oh, we saw it, alright. You know that there is so much astrological and alchemical symbolism in Pokemon, and leading up to Sun and Moon, it's getting heavier and heavier. In fact, it all points to Generation 7 possibly being the final <sighs> generation of Pokemon- <laughs> I love before it. ...before some major change. Possibly Yo, that part oh, no. got me so I hard. I doubt Team Skull are only after riches, right. though they may use that as a front. Also, possibly revenge against Kukui and the Trial Captains. It may be a front, Kukui. and they may steal and poach Pokemon in order to fund their research. But that is not their ultimate goal. No, no. Oh God. They want to wait for the planets to align. 
wait for an eclipse and conjoin the world of the living and the world of the dead. What? Whoa there, that is quite the hefty what? claim. What? You're gonna have to explain this one to me with some evidence. Will do. So, firstly, I should remind you that before the Sun and dead? Moon was known as Sun and Moon, it was Project Rainbow. Pokemon Rainbow. Yes, yeah, see? Which is very I fitting. said that. And in I did. Hawaiian, Greek, and Norse mythology, the three main mythologies of Pokemon as of late, the rainbow represents a connection between mortals and gods, the Azoth. And in Hawaii, every oh island is given a symbolic coat. God. Plus, a rainbow has seven colors, and this is Gen 7. That Norse rainbow what? surrounds the Tree of Life. Which oh my God! To be the He's like goal of alchemy, dropping more stuff on the Tree on us. of Life using a Philosopher's Stone. And so, as I said before, oh. Pokemon Rainbow could be switched into Pokemon spiritually linking. <laughs> that just doesn't roll off the tongue as well. <laughs> anyway, before we delve into the alchemic skull and the language of flowers regarding Team Skull, let's dig into the origins of Team Skull. Firstly, just by looking at them, you can kind of tell that they are foreigners. They don't have the same skin color yeah, or face like structure as the rest European. of the locals. Mm. Remember, even the playable characters in this game are foreigners, as are a few of the trial captains. Mm. And this properly reflects Hawaii, as a significant portion of its population are non-native. In fact, a lot of natives what? are actually moving out because it's getting too expensive to live there. So you wow. didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. Well, uh, let me explain my thought point. process. Upon their reveal trailer, I immediately got a gangsta vibe from them. I should specify, gangsta, not right. gangster, like Team Rocket, <laughs> but gangsta. And, and I'm sure you get that Important vibe difference. Yeah. But what type of gangsta? Well, firstly, this squatting thing is what a lot of Japanese gangsters do. Oh but also my gangsters. god! In fact, while those two are the most common gangsters to do that, many all over the world do it. But because this yeah. is such a prominent thing in Japanese gangsters, likely this was just to further show off the gangsta origins of these characters to the Japanese market. But other than the oh, squatting, wow, upon I watching them with all of these hand that. gestures and everything, I immediately Japanese. got a Southern Californian Hispanic gangsta vibe, oh, as well as a sort of Fast and the Furious vibe. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, as a Californian, these guys fit perfectly. Also, yep. as a Californian myself, I can agree. And that makes a lot of sense also. Hawaii is right between Japan and California. And all of these hand gestures are definitely what more American gangsters are known for. Plus, their skin isn't as dark as the Hawaiians, but not as white yep. as the white or Asian characters yeah. in the game yeah. either. Yep, and in animation and artwork, that's typically how you portray a Hispanic or person. And after coming to that conclusion, I of course started researching the name origins of Guzma and Plumeria. Oh god. Both of which are the names of flowers, of course. And even more, of course, Guzmania and the Plumeria flowers are Guzmania. both native to Mexico oh. and Central America. And Guzman is a Spanish surname on top of that. Further cementing the whole Southern California yeah. Hispanic gangster. Wow. Quick question. The language of flowers was a huge part of your part two reset theory videos. So what do these flowers symbolize? Start with Plumeria. The Plumeria flower to most of the world symbolizes new life. Oh, oh, birth oh. and motherhood. God, and love. And God by the spoken by Plumeria, she seems to be taking a motherly role with the rest of her team, though she specifies big sister instead. But what does get interesting is the specifics. To the Buddhists, the Plumeria symbolizes immortality. Are you oh, kidding me? And oh. It symbolizes the birth of gods, specifically. Okay. And to the Hindu, it means dedication <laughs> and devotion. I'm so sorry. Especially wow. to her family. And of course, to her, Team Skull is her family. Yep. Now how about Guzma? Guzma gets his name from Guzman, and interestingly, that's actually his name in the Spanish translation. Of oh Guzman. Guzman my the Spanish god! Spanish surname of the naturalist wow. that the Guzmania plants are named after. The Guzmanian genus has over a hundred and twenty flowers within it. Oh, but they all have a few things in common. First, though, what they symbolize. Interestingly, this is one of the very few genuses of plants not included in any sort of language of flowers. Hmm. What? But despite this, the Chinese do have a bit of symbolism involving one of them, the Guzmania lingualita. It symbolizes good luck, specifically an arrival of good fortune, hmm. as well as confidence. Hmm. Okay. Well, Guzma sure seems confident, but otherwise there's not much to go on here. Yeah, and doesn't have much no. of a tie. So I was thinking, Every other character named after a flower has that flower name for some sort of deep symbolic mm -hmm. reason. Right. Why would Guzma be the only one without this? So I thought, perhaps it's not a symbolic reason this time. 
Maybe this time literal. I should research the science oh. of this genus of plants. Bruh. And then boom! <laughs> <laughs> The Scarlet Star is the most populous and popular Guzmania plant, and it is somewhat famous for its unique method of reproduction. Oh, Basically, no. this plant has its flower bloom only once in its entire lifetime. Aww. After it blooms, it's kinda cute. it dies. Oh, okay, maybe not but so much anymore. <laughs> its tightly packed petals are pups. While the plant is alive, they cannot get out, but as the flower shrivels up and begins to decompose after it dies, then the pups get out and start their own lives. Meaning, this flower can only create new life from death. by dying. Whoa. It's death and rebirth. What? That's crazy. Anything what else? the One fuck? Little bit. The whole Guzmania family is oh known for housing little ecosystems within its cup-like leaves. Mainly algae, but they can also be home to many poison dart frogs and spiders. And he does have an algae. Toxic probably wow. more than that even. Yep. But anyway, each Guzmania is the center of many ecosystems. These could be seen as kind of like its family. And with Guzma and Gloria referring to their grunts as what brothers and sisters, it seems like this gang is structured more like a family rather than the almost Nazi like Team Flare and Plasma <laughs> or gangster like Rocket and such. They are much closer, with the Guzmania at the center. And this is also very reminiscent of many Hispanic gangs in Southern California. Sometimes intuition can be powerful. Mm -hmm. Now then, you mentioned that there is this thing called the Caput Mortuum, or the Alchemical Skull. So what does that symbolize? Well, death, of course. Mm. Skulls symbolize death globally, but not necessarily death as in the end. Mm -hmm. Death as in the end of an era. The end of your life Dude. is just the beginning oh of the my afterlife. God. Throughout history and in many cultures, <laughs> what? that is what skulls meant. But in alchemy specifically, the alchemical skull, Caput Mortu, Caput signified Mortu. a useless, rejected substance wow. left over from a chemical operation, a transmutation, <laughs> and it is the epitome of decline and decay. Alchemists represented this residue with a stylized human skull, a literal death's head. Now that you mention it, holy the crap! Team Yo, team look, look at his glasses. Yeah. This is a group of rejects. Yes, and this useless Bruh. dead leftover substance just happens to be completely devoid of color. Negrito or negretto is another term, another word used for caput mortum, and of course both symbolize the pure blackness a lack of light a lack of color the polar opposite of a rainbow dude death and team skull's battle transitions looks serious? like it's painted they the black screen out black. the screen and bonus fact creating negretto is the very first step in creating a philosopher's stone as all of the elements used <laughs> must be purified oh my god and destroyed to their very base blackest forms specifically the three elements that the starters symbolize even sulfur salt and mercury and of course with the philosopher's stone one has the power of the azoth the power over the tree of life with this power one could it was like resurrect down there. Yeah. the dead just as az or az did with his precious floet so we know resurrection is a thing in pokemon and since the weapon AZ used to do this is an alchemical weapon, surely Team Skull wants to do the same, but on a massive scale. A scale only possible when there just so happens to be an eclipse. Oh, dude. Oh my from God. Various Polynesian to various Mesoamerican and more, an eclipse symbolized a time when the gates of the underworld or the gates of the spirit world, land of the dead, open. would open. It makes sense too, since often the sun in mythology symbolizes life, and in actuality the sun indeed gives us life. So when it gets blocked by the moon, which in many mythologies is a centerpiece to an underworld or spirit realm, the ghosts and spirits of the dead may take hold. Another bit that's really interesting what? is that in the vast majority of mythologies and superstitions, most Eclipse lore is based around upsetting the established order. Signaling great changes ahead. Oh, great snap. changes! Like the fucking flower. Drastic changes. What's gonna go? Oh my goodness! Boots to the Nintendo NX, perhaps. Hmm. 
Oh! Yo, like the news I found out today. If the handheld console hybrid are true, Hold on. then the next Pokemon games would be on the NX. But of course Dude. the Pokemon games would be on the NX. But of course, the most prominent moment of life and death and eclipses for alchemists was the crucifixion of Jesus. Oh we'll talk a lot my more about dude, Bible Jesus. Three, but just know that Gnostic Christians form the bulk of alchemists and made their alchemy with the Bible's really? teachings in mind. So according to the Bible, just as Jesus died, what? he cried out, It is finished, Father. Into your hands I commend my spirit. And then the sun went black. Caused by a miracle eclipse. eclipse. And of course, later Jesus was resurrected. Are this you is likely where eclipse symbolism me? in alchemy comes from. What with eclipses meaning death and rebirth and all. But now, here's something really interesting. The place that Jesus was crucified was a hill just outside of Jerusalem. A hill with a particular name, Golgotha, which translates to the place of the skull. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Now, stepping away from Are you serious? And, and magic, though I, I suppose that's a religion of its own. This Kaput Mortum, this Negretto, it is also very important to black magic, to necromancy, especially to ancient alchemists, okay. the Egyptians, early Greeks, etc. Necromancy, of course, is magic involving raising the dead and summoning spirits. The ancient Greeks were especially into this. Well, I mean, it was still a taboo, and anyone caught doing it would be executed, but a, a few of them still did it a lot. Anyway, quick refresher. Team Skull. Alchemical Skull. Raising the dead. Eclipse helps with doing that. Especially considering that Lunala is a ghost type, and Thoth, the Egyptian scribe of the underworld, is also the god of the moon. And all of the dead have hmm. to pass through him through the moon to the underworld. Also remember Fee, Dude. the obviously Hawaiian Elite Four member in Ruby and Sapphire. She was a ghost trainer. Ghosts and spirits oh, have a what? lot to do what? with Native Hawaiian culture. Polynesian of all kinds. It all comes together. Jeez. Though, here's a question. Does Alolan Marowak fit into any of this? Oh, God. Remember, in Gen 1, there was the Marowak ghost of Cubone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This new Alolan Marowak could easily be a nod to that being a ghost yeah. player type and all. I think that's exactly what this is. A nod to Gen 1, at least the ghost typing is. But about that fire typing. Oh, my God. Many Polynesian and Melanesian tribes would offer their gods sacrifices by throwing them into oh, a oh, oh, No. Were angry at them. And how would they know if their gods were angry? Well, if the volcano got rumbly, or if the moon blocked out the sun. Anyway, the skull no. is part of the leftovers. The remains of something that no. was alive, but is now dead. Perhaps I'll do, I'll do it, reaction. All it all comes together. Comes together. An omen, and we will soon see things that are oh dead my God. and alive at the same time. Oh Especially my God. considering that in a way, that is how one would gain immortality. When you use the Philosopher's Stone to merge your opposites like an eclipse and become both alive and dead, oh. you can no longer oh die because you're already dead while being alive. You remove your fate and thus cannot have a fatality. By conjoining the world of the dead with the world of the living, no one would ever have to die more? again. That's Whoa. actually a somewhat noble goal I could see an evil team justifying itself I with. Can't Especially even... since those they kill or harm on the way will just be brought back. But what they don't realize is that yeah. they upset the balance and order of everything. And thus, Zygarde, the guardian of the earth and the preserver of balance and order, must take a stand. Explaining why Zygarde is playing a big part in Sun and Moon. Yeah. Plus, actually, I did leave out one little tidbit about the symbolism of the Guzmania plants. I mentioned how to the Chinese they symbolized confidence, correct? Well, mm -hmm. it's confidence with an asterisk. It's being overconfident. Oh. Or rather, confident, prideful, full of yourself, yet you have Yo. an inferiority complex. Because you oh. know that in the end, you are imperfect. And in the end, you will die. So perhaps, just Dude. like the goal to most alchemists, the goal of Team Skull is immortality.
And another possibility is perhaps Bruh. because they're just such a tight-knit family, they might have lost someone at some point and they just want to resurrect them. Who knows? And if my predictions made in this video up here are correct, then Mars Shadow easily has the power to do just that. So, oh two my God. who are very what? likely to the Alola region, came here to the Alola region in search of the powers of Solgaleo, Lunala, and especially Mars Shadow, in order to do what? Gain oh my power. god. This is oh, wow. crazy. Well, in that case, I should go watch that video right now. Yes, yes. And also, if the people <laughs> in this video want more Pokemon content, then they should definitely check out your channel right here. It is really cool. Actually, it's... Yeah, I'll check out his channel. Because, you know, fire theme. Y you know what? It... Why are you still in my dream? <laughs> uh -huh. Well... <laughs> What's this? Oh. Are you for part three? Oh, okay, Snoggin. Oh god. I, uh... Huh. I feel like this is foreshadowing something. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> 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 Austin, what? What happened? <laughs> Sometimes you have the strangest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it all came together. Good, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> his face. Look at his, yeah, look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I feel like I should uh, contribute to his Patreon. How do you do that? Yeah, there's probably a link at the bottom of the video or something. True. Yeah, I'll give him like five dollars. Right. Yo, then we can see our names at the end of his video. Dude, but he already has so many names. We'd probably be like, not even... On. Wait, who's that? Hold up. Did you not see that? Who, what? Who's that dude faded at the end? That was AZ. No, 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 no. Bruh, hold up. Off, All right. Off to the... Oh, my God. Is this the guy from the last... The, from part two that we... Oh, my God, dude. This is the... Remember? This is the guy that's trying to be like Arceus... Yeah, that's the Team Skull guy was the guy at the end of that. No, but look, off to the right is Faded. Hold on. It's right at the end of the video. We see this, the thumbnails and stuff. Yo, who is that? That's what I'm saying. That's the Arceus dude. Oh, my God. Who is that? All right, all right, all right. I think, no, I think that's, I think that's the Team Skull guy, but, but I don't know. Dude. I can't tell. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, pause, 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 pause. Okay, right, listen. Pause. Listen. This is our ana listening. analysis now. We now know what Team Skull is all about, all right? Right. They're trying to be about this immortality life. Now, yeah. how does that tie into part three? Well, if you saw the part three teaser, you see that there is someone that's trying to gain all types of power and all that stuff, right? So that they can, you know, basically destroy, create, all that kind of stuff. Arceus, this guy yeah. is trying to be that Arceus figure that we see at the end. He's trying to, do you think he's trying to become Arceus? Like merge with the Pokemon? Or he's trying to act as Arceus? See, either way, I feel like whichever way they, they go about doing it is going to be crazy. I would never even think to try to merge with a god like Arceus itself, like uh, I don't even know, dude. What's crazy is just that Zygarde is supposed to be like the the like the Pokemon that's trying to balance everything out. But then, like, what happens when Arceus comes down? Mm -hmm. Like, what's he gonna do? I feel like Arceus is just gonna be part of a distraction, and then bam. <gasps> oh, okay, so so what if the goal is to bring Arceus, right? Yeah. And then what if their goal is like to kill Arceus and then restart? Or use Arceus to make everybody immortal? What the fuck? Because, because like, Arceus, I mean, I guess, I guess Mew would be more of like Jesus, but they could sacrifice Arceus and like crucify Arceus and then use Arceus as the key to becoming immortal. But see, like, my thing is, if you destroy the creator, then how, 
how is anything gonna be a creator after yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know. Like, oh my Pokemon! Like, what the Oh, Loxton, yeah. you've done it again, and it's only been a 20 minute video. Two yeah, points. back in once again with the hype. My god. So, wait a minute. So, alright, part three. When's mm -hmm. that? Are we actually gonna get this? Or is it gonna That's... be like a 2.7? No, I think he's going part three next. So, I think he has like a lot, a lot of stuff for part three. I'm gonna check his Twitter. Hold up. Let me see what he says. I don't know, guys. I don't, I don't think he said anything yet. However. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm like shitting my pants with how amazing that was. Yeah, no, well like, done. That was awesome. I uh I can't with these videos, dude. Like it's just such great like you learn so much. Yeah, right? He tied like, in Jesus. Not... I know. <laughs> he tied in Jesus. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, I guess let us know what y'all think about all that and what we thought about it afterwards. At this point right now, all that's left is part three. Yeah. And part three is just going to be a knockout of the park guaranteed into like the next world, into generation eight when that John mm -hmm. gets reset. But hmm. I'm, I'm going to assume that part uh, three is coming out like mid to end of september you think it's gonna be that long so, yeah wow well it was like a month and some from part one to part two and then it's been what like two three weeks since yeah i guess it's been three weeks since part two came out yeah about three weeks since part two came out for oh, this okay. one so i'm thinking probably like mid to end of september unless he has like that much stuff that takes like a lot longer yeah oh, my dude God. even his thumbnail has has freaking oh, I can't remember the guy's name. The team skull leader with wings. Yeah. I didn't even know, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Man, he's got like little Easter eggs hidden all over his stuff. It's almost like, dude, it's like he he's done so much research to the point where it's just like, what if Nintendo just hit him up and they're like, all right, you got us. Yeah. yeah. All right. You want to write the lore from now on? You got it, dude. Like, locks and take the wheel. <laughs> Seriously, like it just makes so much sense, but whatever, man. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Yeah. Let us know. Tweet at us. Yes, please. At UG House Top and mm -hmm. at Uchi Games. All right, we're about to go try to calm ourselves down. All right, so see y'all later.